correct me if I'm wrong, but hitting a decent drive and then screwing up your pitch shot is so frustrating. But there is a way that is so simple, so reliable, it is perfect. And it is especially perfect for older golfers, senior golfers. First of all, I want you to grip the club in the palm of your lead hand. Why? It is gonna help neutralize the hands a little bit to stop the flipping that we don't like. I want you to place the club not so much in the fingers like we do with a regular grip where you can see the knuck, you know, two, three knuckles on the left hand. I want you to place it in the palm of your hand just a little bit more, okay? What that's gonna do is enable you to just see maybe one knuckle, something like that here, as we look at the club and place your right hand on it as normal. But as we take the grip, it should feel like we can't really move the wrist too much. We have suppleness still, but we don't have that much sort of motion. The next thing I want you to do is perhaps the most important thing. Let's say your setup is sort of square in this way. The feet are in line with the shoulders, the knees, things like that. And we're parallel to our target line. If you sort of stand like this for your wedge shots, what happens a lot of the time is the swing will sort of come over and the shot can often get pulled to the left, all right? We start trying to get a bit more handsy, trying to control it a bit more. Because as we get a little bit older, we slow down a little bit. So we need to try and make sure that we clear our lower body out the way. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just to pull the left foot back and turn the left foot out so it's flared. What that's gonna do is help us swing through without having to rotate, without having to sort of spin the hips or make sure we get everything through. Once we've got an open setup, the club can just glide through with minimal resistance, okay? But from here, we just allow gravity to pull that club through. It's so easy and effortless. But let's make sure that you get the angle of attack better by working on your rotation. One of the biggest improvements to your pitching will be when you stop being so steep, when you're not trying to rock the shoulders, okay? That tends to happen, people thinking they're trying to get a bit more spin or get the ball first. What happens is the shoulders tend to sort of rock like this, okay? So they rock back and they rock forwards. That's inconsistent. What we want to try and do is actually have the shoulders turn a little bit more level. What's that gonna do? It's actually gonna help a multitude of things, but one of them is to have a shallower, bigger margin for error. Make some swings. If you've got an alignment stick or a club, that's great. I'm just using this for a visual, but what we're gonna feel is as we sort of make our backswing, we're not tilting up this way. The shoulders are actually turning a little bit flatter. It's gonna feel like we're a little bit more rounded this way and a little bit more rounded this way, okay? That's the feeling that we're gonna have. But what you're gonna do is resist the lower body a little bit here, okay? We are not trying to make a big turn or anything. All we're doing is trying to allow the club to hit the same kind of area every time with minimal resistance, with minimal manipulation or effort and having a slightly shallower angle of attack and a flatter turn is gonna give us exactly that. So practice in front of a mirror. Notice what you're feeling as you make these sort of little turns with your chest. Resist the lower body on the way back. You don't have to really worry about it on the way through, but we're just gonna turn here and turn that way. I want you to check your ball position. Sounds boring, but with pitches, it has a big effect. Make sure that it is not too far back in your stance, because if you do this, thinking is gonna give you more backspin, a lower ball flight. It's not gonna work out for you, because what happens is you end up digging more into the ground even if you strike the ground at the same time as the ball. But what happens is you will strike the club, you strike the ball higher up the face. And that's not gonna give 
the nice controlled flight we want. That's going to give a shot that's more like what you see out of rough when it kind of dips this way. We don't want that. We want control. So put your feet together. Stand a little bit wider and make sure that you do not have it anywhere near the back of your stance. I would say you really want to have it almost lead to heel. That's probably the main checkpoint that is going to give most of you the most precision and consistency. I told you I've got a bonus tip, right? Well, using one club, you can get several distances, whether it's 50, 60, 90 yards, it depends. But all you need to do is this. I've got a 50 yard shot here, just a little bit ahead of where we were before. But what do I do? Do I change clubs? Do I try and hit it a bit higher? Nah. -uh. All I do is narrow my stance. That's it. And the way to decipher what's going to work best for you is just to hit a few shots and practice. Even on a hole like this, just drop a couple of balls down and notice how far they go when you adjust your stance. So that's where I was before with this distance, right? So now I'm just going to stand a little bit closer. A bit more weight is on the, the front side. I'm following exactly the same checkpoints and turn and brush it through. The last piece I want you to put together is deciding what hand is going to be more dominant, okay? Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be your right if you're right-handed or left if you're left-handed. It is about the feel that we want for this particular shot because we don't need to, as I said, do so much where we post up, where we stay really connected and accelerate through with smooth. We can just allow this club to drop and as long as we're not in our own way, we're going to get that low, consistent, spinny flight without effort. So how do we make sure that that happens for you? Try and feel just a throwing action, okay? Whether it's an underhand pass with your right hand, with your trail hand, whether it's that feeling. Or maybe it's the left hand where you're just sort of throwing it that way. If you like that feel, almost a tennis backhand or a ping pong or something, where you're a little bit firmer with the left wrist. I don't particularly care which one you do, but it's the emphasis that I want you to have. It is about allowing that club to just glide, to stay stable and move through, okay? We're not using the body, we're not using the legs, we're using weight and just pushing or pulling the club. I can't tell you which one is going to work best for you. You have to just test it out. You don't even have to use all of those things. Some of them are optional, like the grip. But I would suggest that you make sure that you change your stance, that you resist the lower body, and that you just feel like you're throwing the hands through, that you're not trying to rotate hard, that you can feel the weight of the club and allowing it just to drop through and brush through. That's what I'm thinking about. It's passive hands. It's easy. Watch. Always, my friends, always choose your target. Remember, we don't want a high floater here. We want to make sure it goes over that little hump at the front of the green. But we don't want to send it way up in the sky we want low and controlled with spin. So we choose our intermediate point. Always aim the club first. I take my setup, I move my foot back, I flare my foot out. I've got a slightly weaker grip. And now I'm just going to turn there and brush through. Very passive with the lower body, but it's just so easy to get the distances that you want. 